Good Wednesday afternoon. Thanks for being with us here on THP 11 News at Noon. I'm Michael Aaron. Today marks the first day of congressional redistricting for Arkansas's legislature. Lawmakers will discuss federal districts in the state and they will eventually vote on which proposed map will become the state's new plan. Ian Russell has been following this since last week, joins us live at the state capitol with an update, Ian. Hey, Michael, yeah, we got a lot to discuss here at the state capitol, so let's just go ahead and jump right into the basics here. We got over a dozen maps that all concern one thing, congressional redistricting, and how the state should be split into four. Now, both the Senate and the House are meeting today to talk about this. So really, they're in the introductory phase of this. We're talking about some of those beginning bills that have been brought up. Now, this includes talking about some other bills as well, and they'll sign a lot of those bills, both map-related and not map-related, to committees to be discussed later today and later tomorrow. Now, one of the representatives who brought up one of these map-specific bills says he doesn't even know if his own will make it out of committee, and he says it's hard to see if there's a really clear front-runner on either side of the aisle. I mean, and again, those are good questions. I and mean, I wish I, you know, had those answers. And I think the, those answers are probably out there in the cloud somewhere because I don't, I don't think everybody know how things are going to play out. Because irregardless, of, and getting ready to make an announcement now, but irregardless of what leadership even think, if two thirds of this body think differently, then that changes. So I think we should stay tuned and let's see what's happening. Now, as for what's next, the House is already adjourned for the day and the Senate is still going. Now, those bills that I mentioned that are headed to committee, some of them are going to meet today at 1 p.m. and then also later this afternoon. And the House will come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. to keep discussing this. Of course, a lot more coming up from the Capitol, Michael. Make sure to keep you all updated. Coming up on THV 11 News at 5 and 6. Live at the State Capitol, I'm Ian Russell, THV 11 News. Ian, thank you. Of course, we'll see you tonight at 5 and 6. As you mentioned, remember, this is a process required by law every 10 years after the latest census data is released. The first half of our Wednesday, we've seen a lot of clouds around the region. The clouds have been very threatening, almost looking like it could rain any moment, but it really hasn't done that just yet. Going into the course of the day this afternoon into this evening, the chance of some spotty showers and storms will be going up. Take a look at visible satellite right now, and you can see that blanket of clouds across a large part of central Arkansas, but there are some breaks in that cloud cover. Temperatures ranging from the upper 70s for many spots, except where there is more sun, you've warmed up into the low 80s. Radar loop, it is all quiet across central Arkansas at this time, including the metro, and I think the best chance of showers and storms developing this afternoon afternoon into early this evening will be for southwestern parts of the area south and west of the metro as a little upper level disturbance will swing its way through. This will be the trigger for those scattered showers and storms to develop and that chance of showers and storms will continue even into the overnight hours. So if you don't get the rain out there today, you've got several more opportunities over the next several days. Unsettled weather pattern. That's what we're talking about in full weather. More details on that a little bit later. This afternoon, Harding University will remember and honor the life of Botham John on what would have been his birthday. As you likely remember, John was a 2016 graduate of Harding. He was shot and killed three years ago by a now former police officer at his home in Dallas. The university will unveil a memorial for John in just under an hour, followed by a dedication ceremony open to the public. We will have more from today's ceremony tonight at 5 and 6. This afternoon, as we continue to see signs that Arkansas summer surge is behind us, COVID cases and hospitalizations drop and vaccinations pick back up. 800 new cases of the virus were reported yesterday. That may sound like a lot, but really it's not compared to what we're used to. That makes Tuesday our third straight day with fewer than 1,000 infections. Those low days, they're having a positive impact on our active cases. Those have now dropped below the 11,000 mark. The situation in the state's hospitals also continues to improve. The patient count is down 26 today and nine fewer ventilators are in use. As we see all of these numbers decrease, the state's COVID death rate lags behind. 21 more people have died from COVID complications. As our numbers continue to drop and we prepare to enter another holiday season with COVID still on our minds, a lot of people are wondering, when will the pandemic actually be over? Our Verify team finds out. We got this question in an email from a viewer. What metrics will determine when the pandemic is over? Is there a data target of sorts? 
So let's verify, is there a way to tell when a pandemic is over? Our sources are Dr. Stephen Kisler with the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health and Dr. Linda Naba, an infectious diseases expert. Both of our experts agree there is a way to measure if a pandemic is ending. Pandemics don't end in a bang, but in a whimper. Dr. Kisler explained there are two ways for a pandemic to end. One way, there's no more COVID. The virus just stops spreading. But that one is unlikely. What I think we'll be looking for is um, something where COVID poses a similar risk on the population level as other things that we're familiar with. Flu is another really good example here, where we have enough people vaccinated, where we've especially vaccinated the most vulnerable to severe infection, uh, to severe disease and, and death. Dr. Naba agrees and says there are a few metrics to look at. Infection rate, hospitalizations, and deaths um, are sort of the three major endpoints we look at in addition to what we've talked about before is herd immunity. But both of our experts say the end of the pandemic may not be the same everywhere in the world. For example, tuberculosis kills roughly 1.5 million people every year. It's an epidemic in certain parts of the world, but not here in the United States. I think that that may be what we what we transition into where under some definitions, SARS-CoV-2 will continue to be a pandemic. So yes, we do have a way to measure the end of a pandemic. It's when infections, hospitalizations, and deaths go down to a small number. However, the end could depend on where you live in the world. All right, all right let's turn now to another question a lot of people are asking this week, and that is this, will there be a government shutdown? It's been a very busy week in Washington as Congress and the Biden administration negotiate over the possible shutdown, the potential for defaulting on government loans, and the president's legislative priorities. Skyler Henry has the latest from the White House. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says they will vote on a resolution to avoid a partial government shutdown set to begin Friday. We can approve this measure quickly and send it to the House so it can reach the president's desk before funding expires midnight tomorrow. But there is still an October 18th deadline to raise the debt limit, which allows the government to pay its bills. Republicans say they oppose raising the debt limit because Democrats are working to pass a $3.5 trillion spending bill on their own using a Senate tool called reconciliation. Democrats' reckless taxing and spending spree will earn it zero votes from Senate Republicans. President Biden canceled a planned trip to Chicago in order to continue negotiations with a pair of moderate Senate Democrats who have still not signed off on the spending bill. We are at a pivotal point moment. We need to continue to work to finalize the path forward. The president met with Senators Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema yesterday, and Sinema will be back at the White House today. The two opposed the $3.5 trillion price tag, but won't say what they can accept. No, we haven't talked about figures at all. We should be talking about the need of our country. Without the reconciliation bill, progressive Democrats in the House say they won't sign off on the president's $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, which is scheduled for a vote Thursday. We are not confining our vision, as the president has said he's not confining his, for rebuilding infrastructure to this legislation. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders added to the pressure, tweeting, I strongly urge my House colleagues to vote against the bipartisan infrastructure bill until Congress passes a strong reconciliation bill. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. New at noon, Walmart is doing away with one of its most popular programs, seasonal layaway. We want to know, will this change how you do your holiday shopping? Weigh in at THV11.com slash vote. For decades, many families counted on the service to help get those expensive presents under the tree, but that tool will no longer be available. Shoppers will still be able to buy now and pay later using a program called Affirm but it'll cost you. The interest rate to use a firm is between 10 and 30%, which could be pricey, especially for people who have poor credit.